What is going on guys and girls? I hope you guys are all out there being safe. Uh, staying inside during these hard times, these COVID times. Uh, today's video, I think I'm gonna do something a little different. I look really stupid. <laughs> That's better. I think I'm gonna do something a little different. I think what I'm going to do It's been highly requested that I go and break down every single dollar I've spent on the race car I'm building the RX-8, the 2JZ swapped RX-8. So I created a little budget breakdown thing right here. I'm just gonna go through and start naming off the parts I bought. To clarify at the start, I wanna go ahead and say that I have not made it a goal to make this build cheap. This isn't, by, by no means, this is a, a budget build. Um, this is just a build that I am, I'm trying to buy the nicest parts I can find without going an insane amount on the price. So, the lowest price I can get without compromising quality. And I'm also 20 years old, I'm in college, so I can't afford to be buying billet blocks. I can't, I, I can't afford to be doing all that, and all the labor has to be done by yours truly. So, yeah, all right. So, one, the first thing I'm missing is the cost of the chassis. The RX-8 two years ago was my daily driver. One day, the engine started making some weird noises and the transmission gave out. At that point, I didn't have the money to fix it. It got pushed to the side, so basically the chassis is free, right? It was just a random, only reason I'm using the RX-8 is because number one, I liked it. Number two, I have some weird emotional bond to it. And three, it was free, so why not? While I was my daily driver, I put on some BC Racing coilovers. This was from a long time ago. I can't just click the link. Okay. BC Racing coilovers, they're adjustable. Um, I think I'm going to keep using them when I put the 2JZ in. But I'm probably going to need to change out the spring rates uh, to make up for the large amount of weight that's in the front now. But yeah, these are pretty expensive, $1,000. Nice little start. Um, I also got the Modception Wide Body Kit. That's the rear fender you see that I have molded on. Yeah, they also sell a lot of cool stuff here. This is overseas. This is not This is located somewhere over in Europe, I'm pretty sure. But yeah, they make all the parts for the RX-8, all fiberglass. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I bought the rear over fender. Oh yeah, here. The rear over fenders. Can't see my cursor. Hmm. Anyway, rear over fenders, which are these right here. Went and bought those, and I had those molded on, and that's why I made the white body out of them. Um, I got engine bay paint. The paint I used was obviously the Toyota cement gray with the blue flake. All the body work I did with stuff from AutoZone, just the Bondo. I did some sandable primer, nothing crazy. Um, the carbon fiber panel. So that's the, the last series I just started. And I have a very detailed step-by-step -step process on how I'm doing it. Um, I bought all the materials from fiberglass. That's, that's where I got the carbon fiber from, the resin, all that kind of stuff. You just go watch the video if you have any questions. I'll link it right here. You can go watch that. It's not, it's really, it's a really cool thing. Uh, the front crash bar, I need a little more space, so I went ahead and bought these the Street Faction front crash bar, $200, pretty cool looking, um, doesn't have a midpoint jack, but yeah, it's, it's pretty cool, I like it, uh, alright, for the interior, nothing crazy yet, right, I just have this, I just have a steering wheel, that's all I have, so far, you know, and on the bottom of this list, I have a list of all the things that I planned upon the build that I have not purchased yet, I don't have prices for those, but yeah. All right, here comes the good stuff. Drive chain. I have a 2JZ GTE VVTi. I bought this from, I think it was Engine Land or something like that. It was in Can it was in Canada. Um, I bought it way before the prices have jumped. Right now, the prices for 2JZs are astronomical. They're up in 7,000s on eBay. I bought it way before all this, and it came with the automatic transmission. Um, I went ahead and bought a CD009 for $300, um, I'm, I plan to make these two. 
the rear sump oil pan, eight hundred dollars. You need that to fit it in the two J's. I mean, to fit in the RX eight. You need a rear sump, and they're overly priced. It, if you can find one way cheaper, snag it and resell it because that they are rare. Um, engine mounts, I just bought them. I bought regular old. Uh, it's for the MK3 Supra. Easy engine mounts, it's not hard. They match up perfectly with the next thing, which is the LS1 engine mounting kit. Uh, actually, what's crazy too is a while ago they sold Steven over here at LS1 RX8. He sold just the engine mounts. And now I look, check the website for a link and they don't sell just the engine mounts anymore. So now it looks like you gotta buy the whole kit. Which I guess I probably should have done anyway. Back here, go back over here, Jay-Z powered. Yeah, you buy this whole kit. Uh, I, I didn't have this kind of cash sitting around. So, yeah. I just bought, I guess, where are they? right here. These two are the engine mounts. I just went ahead and bought the engine mounts. They have a whole kit. He has a whole tutorial on how to use everything. I'm not gonna steal his content. Just you know, if you have any questions on that, go to his website. I think he sells a manual or something. I don't know. You'll find it. Um, for the manifold setup, I'm using a drift motion exhaust manifold, just a real cheap exhaust manifold. Not hard. It's nothing crazy. Um, let me show you it. It looks like it's good quality. It's not all equal length. It's you know, yeah, it's nothing. It's nothing insane. For the front intercooler, I'm using Mishimoto's front intercooler. It came in $300. I'm just using a universal one. It, you don't need a specific one. You can find an eBay one if you're going for a budget, but you know, I like Mishimoto stuff. It's a four inch thick core. I liked it, that was cool. Uh, then I have the Titan adjustable cam gear. This isn't too necessary other than the fact that I like the way, I like the way it looks. It's blue, it's pretty cool looking. It kind of stands out in the engine bay. That's the only reason I have that. Nothing. You know, the same thing with the Tomei timing belt. I needed a new timing belt. Stock one was $89. Tomei was blue. So I was like, you know what? Extra 20 bucks. Looks cool. A uh, PHR timing belt bracket. So where this goes is it actually goes and holds the timing belt on the bottom. It's a billet piece. So if you're planning on using the 2JZ and making it make over 600 horsepower, and you're going to be bouncing off rev limiter, you need to, it's probably not a bad idea to just go ahead and upgrade that. It, it replaces the stock piece, it's a whole billet piece, a lot stronger. It was kind of expensive, but I mean, peace of mind. I haven't heard of a limb breaking, but peace of mind. This pff, harmonic balancer, this thing is a pain in the ass to install. I have a whole video, multiple videos of me trying to install this thing. It was so hard to install. But once I got it on, it looks beautiful in the engine bay. 100% worth it. So, I also have a four burner turbo. It's made for about 600 to 700 horsepower, somewhere around there, wheel horsepower. Um, I, I have the specs sitting at work, but the specs, it's a custom turbo. I, I don't remember exactly what the specs are. I'll post them on my Instagram story later. If you guys want to follow the Instagram, I'm gonna put it right, where should I put it? Right in the middle. Ooh. Put it right here. Make sure you, you know, give that thing a follow. I post on my story every day, check it out. Uh, all right, when I was back when I was daily driving the RX-8, I also upgraded the Mishimoto, the Mishimoto, I upgraded to the Mishimoto radiator, and then I upgraded to the Mishimoto radiator fans. Um, I'm gonna try to go ahead and keep using those because they fit perfectly. We'll see. They might not, they were able to keep a rotary cool, but I don't know if it's gonna be able to keep a 2JZ cool. So it might need something a little bit bigger. We'll see. As of right now, I'm gonna keep using that. But the goal is tools. I thought this was a very important section to uh, add in because that's one of the most overlooked things. The amount of money you spend on tools like for example this Mil miller welder right here the miller welder by itself was like 600 dollars. and then once i got that i had to go get the gas and the gas was 300 dollars. and then you had each refill was 30 bucks the paint gun the paint gun was like 200 
You know what I mean? It, and this stuff adds up. The pulley extractors, I went through four. To get the harmonic balance rock, I went through four different pulley extractors. It adds up, you know? It adds up. In search of, I, I'm, I know I'm missing a whole bunch of things, but you know, the adapter plate and clutch to combine the 2JZ and the CD009. Drive shaft that goes from there to the rear end that I still haven't picked out yet. Rear end, that includes axles, all the fuel, fuel uh, fueling. You know, I might need a surge tank. I, I, um, tons of bushings. I will plan on redoing every single bushing in the car. I have the front bushing set right now. To replace the lower, lower and upper control arms. All those bushings with the uh, um, energy bushings. I guess I can add that to the list. I, I, I bought the energy bushings kit. Um, a roll cage. I got to figure that out because now that I'm doing the carbon fiber body. It kind of loses all of its structure and integrity, so I need to go through and fix all that. Seats. I gotta figure out racing seats. Uh, and those stock seats aren't gonna work anymore. I need to figure out the front wide, uh, wide body. Oh, I missed a whole bunch. I need to figure out harnesses. Uh, wheels. I, that's gonna be expensive. I'm, expect, I'm expecting to spend some money on like, some bead locks, maybe? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing yet. If you have any suggestions on what kind of wheels, what kind of anything, just, you know, drop in the comments. I'll respond to you, tell you whether I like it or not. Uh, the front wide body, I want to go with the Modception, but Modception isn't responding to me. So right now I need to figure out another wide body option. Uh, I need to figure out the rear ducktail and the rear wing once I figure that out. I, I think I'm going to be doing a chassis now. Um, intercooler piping. I got two options here. I can't. I I don't want to use silicone. Silicone. The connectors. I I don't. I have always hated that look. So either I can go spend a thousand dollars on a TIG welder and work on doing it myself, TIG welding all all my own aluminum piping, or I can pay a shop to do it, which would probably be about the same. So I think I'm gonna buy the TIG welder. Blow off valve, I, I'm, I know I'm missing stuff. Blow off valve, wastegate, exhaust, the whole exhaust from the end of the turbo all the way back to the end of the car, that's gonna be expensive. And the rest of the carbon fiber. This is just the stuff that you know, I'm sitting here and I think I need. Not to count you know, all the fluids. I know I'm gonna need spark plugs, coil packs. That's one thing I forgot right there, coil packs. I'm gonna be using, I think the GTR coil packs. I think that's what I have set up. Whole wiring harness, forgot that. You know, that's another whole bunch of money. So, there's a lot more money to be spent on this car. And like, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough, that I am not planning on making this a budget build. By no means. I, I don't want this, that's what I have, I don't know if I've released it on YouTube yet, but I bought another car, and it's a red car. That's what I'm going, if you follow me on Instagram, you've already seen it, so. That car will be a budget build. That car we're going to be doing, you know, our own loaded diff. That's not, I haven't, I don't know about my diff yet. My diff's going to be on $800. And we're going to be doing, uh, on the red car, that's, we're going to be doing a budget build. We're going to be making sure every single penny is saved at that build. And that's going to be a fun build. But, probably what you guys were all waiting for is to see what this grand total is. And like I said, th these are all prices that... You could, if you were to buy this exact part, this is what you would get. I might have gotten helped out with a couple of things. There might be different connects going on. So take this number with a little bit of, with a grain of salt. Ten thousand five hundred dollars is what I have spent so far, not counting all the in search of items. That is a bunch of money, and that number might scare a couple people it might scare people off and go oh i can't do a 2jz swap because this is much it's not it's really not i mean i i dumped out the stock turbos this is also not counting all the parts i've sold i have twin turbos for the 2jz sitting there i can sell that worth 600 dollars i got tons of parts i mean i had an engine in the rx8 before that got i got rid of that so this number is kind of you know it, take it take it with a grain of salt we we you know there's some stuff that kind of is what it is um, I plan on getting a new one. Oh, another thing right here. I'm gonna go ahead and add the in search. 
I needed the intake. I don't want to use the stock 2JZ intake anymore. It just has too many holes, too many sensors. All the wiring is out of wiring harness. Wiring harness. Sensors. Oh, a big one I missed right here. ECU. ECU's going to be a huge thing. And probably even a digital dash. The main thing you need to think about with all this is that the main drive components are done. You know, we only have a couple more big purchases before everything else is just kind of piecing everything together. So I think the main of our expenses are done. A big reason I wanted to show you guys the budget breakdown is to kind of give a little bit of an explanation as to why videos don't just come out every week. You know, I'm a college student, I work a full-time job, and I'm a full-time college student. And I just happen to mess with this car on the weekends or, you know, after work some nights. So, you know, it, it's expensive. You know, it, it, it takes a while. And that's why we have a couple other projects going on. I don't know if I post any YouTube videos, but if you follow my Instagram, you know that we're in the process of building a shop right now. Uh, today is currently Monday, 921. So, in a couple, hopefully, by the end of the week, we will be on the process of pouring the concrete. And from there, I mean, we will put up walls, and I think that's going to be a that's going to be the next step in this channel is having our own shop, our own area where we can work on cars, not have to worry about noise complaints. It's our own area; we can paint the walls. But yeah, that's kind of what the big holdup is at the moment. The fact that we have so many different things going on. So yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please make sure you drop a comment, drop a like. Consider subscribing if you, you know, if you watch this whole video, you're obviously curious. Go watch my other videos. Go watch me put the 2JZ in. I'll link a couple right here. I have a whole playlist of us building the 2JZ. Uh, we also have a boat that we're building. My friend Michael, he's, you know, we, we had this scrap boat and we went and put all the stringers back in it. We're building a boat from scratch. When we start putting more videos of that on the channel. We have a little red car. I don't know if I've posted a video of it yet. That's going to be the new drift car. So, that's all for this. Thank you for watching. Let me know if this number surprised you. Peace.